Hello subs, I thought it was about time to update my long distance backpacking, through hiking, rucksack video. This is the kit that I've used on the West Highland Way, Hebridean Way and that I'll be using on the Cape Raft Trail hopefully this September. I first started venturing out into the mountains at the turn of the millennium. I've bought and sold a lot of kit during that time. As the years have rolled on, my kit has got lighter and more expensive. I spend too much money on this stuff. Ok, warnings have been issued, so continue on at your own risk and don't blame me when your bank account is empty. <laughs> ok, let's start with a very recent purchase. If you saw my last video, you'll have seen that my trekking poles were due an upgrade. These are the Black Diamond Distance Carbon FLZ. They're adjustable from 95 to 110 centimeters, which is perfect for my height. They're collapsible as well, which is the biggest reason for the upgrade because the other ones were too cumbersome when I had to use public transport to get back to wherever I dumped my car. These fold up easily into three sections and can be placed inside my pack. Okay, straight on to the most important part of my kit, the items that will protect me from the whims of mother nature. For my tent, I had been using a four season mountain backpacking shelter, which although weighed only 1.6 kilograms, was way overkill for the West Highland Way. This is a three season Terra Nova Solar Photon 1 and weighs only 865 grams. For my sleeping bag, I use a Rab Neutrino 200. It weighs only 580 grams. It has an extreme limit of minus 13 centigrade, a comfort limit of 1.5 and a 6.5 comfort rating. I like to use a minimalist bag and supplement it with items in my pack that serve a dual purpose. I carry insulated trousers and jacket for my camp wear along with a full merino wool base layer which I will sleep in. This way means you can put on take off layers to suit you inside the bag and not carry a heavy heavier weight sleeping bag that can be too hot sometimes. My sleep pad is the Neo Air X Lite women's version. It's warmer than the men's version and just about the right size for me. I also have a silk liner to add warmth and keep the bag clean. So this is my dry warm camp wear and sleeping bag supplementary items when needed. Remember I will be walking these routes from early spring to late autumn, so I will need stuff that can cope with freezing temperatures. This is my mountain equipment Dewline hooded jacket. It's very warm for its weight and because of its leery colour I managed to get it at half price in a cell. <laughs> Next is some insulated trousers, the Montane Prison Pant. In my wild camping winter rucksack, I use the tried and tested and also very cheap British Army Softy Thermos, but the Montanes are just as warm and half the weight, and a million times more expensive, so Muggins had to buy them. And of course, the matching Montane Prism Booty. These are my walking around camp shoes, and I whack them on in the sleeping bag when my feet get cold. These are my merino base layers which I always wear in camp and in the sleeping bag. I would never get inside a sleeping bag with my bare skin. If you do, you will stink your bag out in next to no time and your bag will need cleaning, which will ruin its warmth rating. So I carry these items of clothing in addition to my primary gear. This is a Monte Minimus smock which I use as an outlier windbreaker when it's too hot for my Paramo Adventure Light smock, which you'll see later on. Some Berghaus Gore-Tex pack light over trousers with a full length zip, so it can be easily put on and off over boots without taking them off. This is an Alpkit microgrid fleece, which is very lightweight and warm and looks very snazzy in the pub. And there are a lot of pubs en route on the West Highland Way and the spare Montana Les Micro Hoodie base layer.
A wet sock will give you a blister far quicker than any bad fitting pair of boots. I always carry enough socks to be able to clean and rotate between them during the duration of the backpack. I use Darn Tough and Bridgedale socks. For pants, a few pairs of Icebreaker Everyday Merino boxers do the job. To keep Joe and Joanna public from hissing at you on the bus or train or ferry or aeroplane. <laughs> this is what I use to process water. I used to use a Soya Mini, but now I've upgraded to the Squeeze because of its greater flow rate. Because sometimes I might encounter freezing temperatures, I've added a thermal cover and a pouch for it. If these freeze, they won't work and you'll have to chuck them away. I also have a very packable container for when I have to carry water inside my backpack. Food. The first time I did the West Highland Way, I carried a mountain of food. This was a big mistake. Now on my adventures I carry an emergency two day supply of food only. I know that on the remote Cape Raft Trail I will have to carry a lot more than this. But if you're doing the West Highland Way, make use of the many pubs and shops along the way. Give some money to the local community instead of, pour, instead of paying for this overpriced camping food. Now for a couple of random items that barge their way into the shot. An Optimus seat, an eat mat and an Aero's pillow. This is my cook kit. All I really need is the ability to boil water and nothing does that quicker than a jet boil type burner. A long handled spork and a wooden spoon complement it nicely. For light and power duties, I put my trust in Anchor and Frunite. I've been using these brands for a few years and they have never let me down. This is the TC12. It has a maximum output of 1100 lumens and can be recharged on the go. It's seriously light and bright. To go with it, I have a TH20 520 lumen headlamp. It's lightweight, aircraft grade aluminium and waterproof. I have anchor power core and micro USB to power me on the go too. I forgot to add the wall plug charger, but it's in the kit as well. Some odds and ends. An insulated cup, compass, wash kit, clear tenacious tape and Dyneema rope, gloves, cup. And I see most of you bushcraft guys sniggering at my knife but it's really all I need. My first aid kit. I carry what I know how to use. So it's Voltero for muscle pains, insect bite cream, body glide for any chaffing problems. Also this is very good to use on your feet before putting on your socks. And of course Vitamin I, ibuprofen, and antihistamines. Some berm shield, because I always burn myself on the stove, and some blister stuff, although I rarely get blisters, but just in case. Some more stuff. A Mitch head net. This is essential in Scotland if you want to keep your sanity. A couple of microfiber towels, and a poop scoop. And of course, it's missing from here, but a pee bottle. As you will know from my previous video, it's a must. I stopped using the water bladder, so I've added some water bottle holders to the front of my pack. I've also upgraded the front pouch to this great kangaroo pouch that I've attached to the shoulder straps of my rucksack. It's really easy to get on and off on the go thanks to these little S carabiners that I found on eBay.
I've put another pouch here to carry that all-important mobile phone, which I'm sure you know has many uses on the trail other than making calls. So this is what I wear when I'm out walking. These Las Bativas have two West Highland Ways and a Hebridean Way in them, so that's 360 miles and they're still going strong. I'm not an advocate for backpacking in those trail running type shoes with no ankle protection. These are nearly as light as those types of shoes but offer the correct protection for your ankles which I think is critical. And they're very comfortable to wear too thanks to their flexible sole. I always protect the top of the boots with a gaiter to stop water and ticks getting inside. I've used Gore-Tex in the past but since moving over to Paramo I've not gone back. I can wear this smock all day with just the base layer underneath in nearly all kinds of weather. I won't try to explain the science behind it but if you want to know more just google knit wax analogy. The smock has a very good hood that easily seals out the elements when needed. It also has three long zips that can be opened fully to ventilate your body if you get too warm. You know how it is with Gore-Tex. You put the jacket on. Then you take it off when you get too hot, then you get cold and stop to put it back on again. The idea with Paramo is that the jacket stays on and you just adjust its ventilation when needed and I think it works well. For my walking trousers I've had these North Face Apex Mountain Pants for a long time. They're very comfortable to wear, have a lot of zippered pockets and they dry very quickly so more often than not I don't bother putting on my over trousers. My base layer is another one of my Montana Liz hoodies. Sadly I've had to go back to synthetic from Marina because I find wool too hot for anything but winter conditions. But I might change my mind if I get a pair of those new icebreaker super lightweight merinos. More money. <laughs> so that was my long distance backpacking kit for early spring to late autumn. Thank you for watching and until the next time, see you out there and on YouTube.